Barclays Center in Brooklyn, the best high school basketball players in America continue the amazing tradition of the Jordan Brand Classic. Oh, oh, Julius Gold, sweep on him. This kid has caught my eye. You can see why he's a pro in the making. Parker, look at this. Are you serious? Remember the name, Jabari Parker. Wiggins. Look out. He's going to be the number one pick in the NBA draft. The stars of last year's game, already household names in the basketball world. Now we meet the legends of tomorrow. On deck, Jaleel Okafor, number one in our ESPN 100, headed to play for Coach K at Duke. He will lead the East All-Stars against the West, led by Cliff Alexander, number three in our ESPN 100, a big man heading to Kansas. Those just two of the stars you will see tonight as we welcome you to the 2014 Jordan Brand Classic here at Barclays Center in Brooklyn. It's the East against the West. Basketball legends of tomorrow on display tonight. As we welcome you to Brooklyn, Bob Shoes and alongside Paul Biancardi, our ESPN National Director of High School Basketball Recruiting. Notre Dame legend Lafonso Ellis, Quint Kesnick will join us in a moment. This is going to be a fun night. The talent that's on display, it's amazing. And you want to start in the pivot with where we're going to see some big men. Yeah, this game is always laced with NBA talent. And the size and skill of the big men are going to make this game special. The versatility of the shooting guards and small forwards is going to make it exciting. Fonz. I'm impressed with the senior class. As, as well you should be. This is the last time that this group is going to be on the floor competing against the best teams in the country. Looking forward to some great matchups and who's going to bring it tonight. Well, we've already seen some of these big men. We'll see Okafor. We'll see Alexander. Someone has to get those guys the ball. And we'll see <laughs> some of the best point guard talent in America tonight as well. One of my favorite point guards in the country, Emmanuel Moutier, the number five player in this class. He's going to be a matchup nightmare for SMU. At 6'5", he has terrific vision, can see over the entire defense. Poise can play the D, and he is explosive in transition. For the East, Tyus Jones, the nation's number one point guard. His ability to find the open man is what makes him special. He knows how to run a team and manage a game. If you leave alone, He'll make a three or floaters in the lane. He signed with Duke. Emmanuel Moutier headed to SMU. We talked to him about the decision to play for Larry Brown. He said he spoke with Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson told him, when I was scoring 40 a game, Larry Brown still made me a better basketball player, made it an easy decision to head to SMU. And for Tyus Jones, how hard could your decision be to go play for Duke and Mike Krzyzewski, two of the top point guards in America, squaring off tonight, and now a very special presentation here at the Jordan Brand Classic. Jaleel, what is your mindset uh, tonight? Uh, my mindset for this game is always to win. Uh, I, I was fortunate enough to win the McDonald's game and then last week the Hoop Summit, so I would like my last high school event to be go off in a win, and uh, that's what I'm expecting to do. What can fans expect to see from this game in, in terms of, of, of the tempo? It's going to be extremely competitive. We're all familiar with each other's games, so it should be a fast tempo, and it's going to be really fun. Thank you. Bob. Thank you. All right, Quinn, thanks very much. So Jolly Loca Ford, number one in our ESPN 100, will lead an East group. Also excited to see Kelly Oubre tonight. He's been impressive during this All-Star season. An explosive athlete with versatility. He owns a 7-2 wingspan. He's going to use that on offense and defense. 
He signed with Bill Self at Kansas. And taking a look at the starting lineup for the West, and Fonz Stanley Johnson, number seven in our ESPN 100, headed to Arizona. Going to Arizona goes hard, really competes on the defensive end with great posture. Told me yesterday he really idolizes Kenneth Fareed's energy, tries to bring the same to the floor. And what does that tell you both about a player's mentality when you ask him what the the mentality is, and he brings up the name Kenneth Fareed. Is today's game also available on ESPN3 Surround? ESPN3 Surround is a new exclusive second screen experience on ESPN3 featuring unique camera angles, audio feeds, and crowd cams. You know a young man is all about effort when he wants Kenneth Fareed type qualities to be a part of his game. You'd think Kevin Durant might be the first player you bring up from his position. Stanley Johnson played with Aaron Gordon, the Oakland Soldiers AAU. He told me that's where he learned that motor fonts from Aaron Gordon. Indeed. Good example. Yeah, what a great guy to learn from. And quickly on the board, a trigger from the wing. Daniel Hamilton knocks down the jumper, and it's a quick 3-0 lead. And now Okafor works the baseline. Oh, good job. And a foul called in the corner as Hamilton will be called for the first foul of the game. And let's take a look at some of the players we are going to see later on. James Blackman Jr. is a big recruit for Tom Crean at Indiana. And Trey Lyles and Carl Towns, of course, part of a four-man group headed to Kentucky, along with Devin Booker and Tyler Eulis, as not only four players heading to play for the Kentucky Wildcats, Four players in this game heading to play for Duke as well. Well, I really like Carl Towns. His ability at almost seven feet tall to be able to go out and stick a three is really going to open it up to be able to go inside and open up driving lanes for those guards to attack. And Fonz, he's really improved in the last three weeks. Learning how to play more in the post. We know he's comfortable, confident, facing up. He's got to put that big body <laughs> downside and post up a little more. Absolutely. Line drive jumper goes down for Stanley Johnson. Again, he's headed to Arizona. So a couple of jump shots by an Arizona recruit, Daniel Hamilton from UConn. They've got the six points for the West. Johnson's going to impact Arizona. Nick Johnson leaving. Yes. Aaron Gordon leaving. Stanley Johnson, the ability to impact that lineup right away for Sean Miller. Guy that's a power driver. And to your point, he can step out and make that open three. He can get after you defensively as well. Here's the big man matchup as Cliff Alexander comes up short, going to Kansas over the top of Okafor. Tyus Jones the other way, hands one off. And that's the playmaking ability we know that Tyus Jones has. And he and Okafor will both be at Duke. Nice job by Okafor getting the offensive rebound high. Fonz keeping it high. Getting two <laughs> points, right? Didn't bring it down for the little guys. Indeed. He's so big down there, so versatile with the basketball. When he catches it deep in the paint, he is nearly unstoppable. Look at the patience when he catches it, reads it, then backs you down and gives you something like that. <laughs> That's NBA-ish post play right there by 15 in the black. Jaleel Okafor heading to Duke. You can't stop him one-on-one -on -one in the post. Emmanuel Moutier heading to SMU to play for Larry Brown. Banks at home and back the other way comes Oubre. Behind the back, nice ball handling by the Kansas recruit. But it's knocked out of bounds. And Mike Bethea from Rainier Beach High School in Seattle heads up the west side. And Dave Thorson from De La Salle High School in Minneapolis is coaching the East. It's amazing, back to Mike Bethea for a moment, the number of quality players, Paul, we've seen over the last 10 to 15 years come out of the Seattle area. You think about Peyton Siva, he's come out of there. Yes. Oubre turns it over. Johnson, the hit ahead, and off the window. A throw down for Stanley, or rather for Cliff Alexander. The number three player in our ESPN 100 going to Kansas. I guess you don't yell at guys in this game, huh? For not getting back on defense. Is that okay in this game? Because I don't like it. I always wonder if the Mike Krzyzewskis and Thad Matas and Roy Williams of the world are watching this game at home going, guys, enjoy your night because you're never going to be able to do this kind of stuff when you play for me again. Exactly, Bob. <laughs> There's Dave Thorson from De La Salle High School in Minneapolis. I lived in Minneapolis for about seven years, and De La Salle has always had a very competitive ball club. 
Jalil Okafor was offered a scholarship by DePaul when he was in eighth grade. Eighth grade. Well, if you're playing it downtown Chicago, of course, went to Whitney Young and DePaul wanted to try and keep arguably what they saw as the future best player in America at home. Why not? <laughs> Good move. Touch pass off the alley oop and the finish for Daniel Hamilton, who's going to play for Kevin Ollie and the national champs at Connecticut. And you see the versatility of Theo Pinson with the touch pass mm -hmm. to give it up quick. Okafor finishes. And that's what's so impressive about Okafor. Yesterday, he grabbed one off the board, pushed it the entire way down the floor, two change of direction dribbles, and finished at the rim. How about that for the 260-pounder? Watch this fast break right here. Johnson with the throw-ahead pass. Theo Pinson, nice touch pass. Like the unselfishness early in this game. I'm not sure it's going to last. <laughs> guys want to get their numbers, you know, in this game, guys. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Fading away, in and out for Alexander. Offensive rebounds. Won't go inside. Keeping it alive, though, is Stanley Johnson. Headed into Arizona, and he'll try a three. In and out. And the rebound falls to the future Duke point guard, Tyus Jones. Woo, finds his future teammate, Angeli Locafor. Well, and that's the thing, Bob, that's so impressive about that young man is he's not only a rebounder and a low post player, but at his size, his ability to change ends of the floor, impressive. It's getting better. Wasn't always that good, Fonz. He <laughs> would run like that. Really? Theo Pinson, no, but Emmanuel Moutier follows, oh. and then all-star game transition defense what? as we get the dunk at the other end for LJP going to Georgetown. But it's all happening because of five in the black, Tyus Jones. Loves to throw it ahead. Can find you in traffic. Watch him give it up right here. And the finish is good for LaFonso Ellis' favorite player this week going to North Carolina, Justin Jackson. I love his versatility. Gets after you defensively. Can finish with either hand around the rim. It's a one-point game, and we've already had highlight plays at both ends. If you're open, Jones will find you. The 2014 Jordan Brand Classic is brought to you by Jordan Brand and in part by Gatorade, official sports nutrition provider of the Jordan Brand Classic and Upper Deck, celebrating 25 years of quality, innovation and authenticity. Back in Brooklyn, a one point game in the Jordan Brand Classic. We've got three athletes who are not participating this weekend. Isaiah Whitehead heading to Seton Hall. He's got a hamstring. Joel Berry, Mr. Florida Basketball Player of the Year. Ankle injury. He'll be uh, playing at North Carolina. And we're joined by Miles Turner, who's the only undeclared player uh, here this week. You're going to make your decision on April 30th, ESPNU, Recruiting Nation. First of all, the injury. H how you doing and, and what happened? I'm doing quite well, actually. Over um, last weekend at the Nike Hoop Summit, I came down on uh, my opponent's foot and uh, sprained it a little bit. It's a mild sprain. I should be back working out by next week. I didn't want to um, put anything in jeopardy by trying to play this week. Um, I'm very happy to be here. It's an honor just to be a part of all this. So, I mean, I want to make sure, you know, I can here smart, 400%. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, that's a smart decision. You've gone on five official visits and two unofficials. What'd you learn? Oh, I learned a lot about each each and every campus. You know, they're all different. You know, I kind of speculate that the campuses would be kind of a, the same in a little bit of an aspect, but each one is unique. Everyone in every way. So, when you break it down with your family, what, what factors do you think can make the big difference? Just where I feel the most comfortable. That's probably the huge thing for me. If I if I come in uh, anywhere I go and feel comfortable, I mean that's that's why these visits were so important. Whether it was the campus. Was the, uh, the coaches, whether it was the students, I mean, anything. Miles, thank you. Once again, it's ESPNU, April 30th, 4 o'clock, Recruiting Nation. is going to make his decision, Bob. And Miles Turner quit the number two player in our ESPN 100. The eight schools that he had on his list, at least at the start of this process, Paul, Ohio State, Kentucky, Oklahoma State, Duke, Arizona, SMU, Kansas, and Texas. Where do you see this going? Well, I think he's obviously going to pick one of the schools that he made an official visit to. Kentucky and Arizona never got visits, so I don't see him going to those schools. It's going to be one of the five official visits, Bob. 
And that Texas visit, I, I guess, is still to come as he has made official visits to Duke and Kansas. No, he visited he made, Texas already. Made the official visit to Texas. You know, I think SMU and Texas A&M are on the outside looking in with the unofficial visits. Paul, can you imagine if he goes to Texas, he'll combine with Cam Ridley on the inside and make one of the most formidable front lines in the Big 12. You know his favorite player hmm. is Kevin Durant. Mm. And he would have a Kevin Durant-like effect Indeed. if he went to Texas. He would be the face of that program and take a great team coming back, a young team coached by Rick Barnes who did a great job this year, maybe get them to a Final Four. His ability to block shots, score with the face-up game, he's a difference maker, no question about it. Well, with, the fa with his ability to face up, now all of a sudden you allow Cam Ridley, who's so good with his back to the basket in a low post, very complimentary of one another. That would be a dynamic duo inside. But wherever he's looking, Fonz, there's gonna be heavy traffic. I mean, Duke has Okafor, he can play with him and be pretty good too. Yes. With Tyus Jones, you think about Kansas with Cliff Alexander, Yeah. it's a hard choice to make. Good problem to have. <laughs> well, there's John Leal Okafor over on the bench. He is headed to Duke. And could you imagine if Okafor and Turner combined Ooh. as the incoming front court for Mike Krzyzewski? How about that big guy, Carl Towns, 44 in the black. Well, that's what we talked about. Granted it from deep. Yeah. I mean, that was NBA. The bigs are so versatile out here tonight. It is incredible how they can play with their back to the basket, but still step out and knock down the deep ball. The bigs are so special. I mean, Towns is the most skilled. Okafor, the best in the low post. Cliff Alexander, a tremendous rebounder. And Miles Turner, who are not seeing best shot blocker. Another alley-oop. This time it's Stanley Johnson. A beautiful feed as he is going to Arizona. And a save. Grayson Allen tracks it down in the corner. Spins and misses <laughs> as the future Duke point guard has it knocked out. Let's take a look at that Stanley Johnson pass to the finish. Well, Stanley Johnson's doing a little bit of everything. We talked about him at the top in lineups. I love the way he plays the game. Unbelievable motor. He's knocking down the three ball. He can really get in the gaps and showing his ability to pass the basketball as well. And he's a winner. Yes. Four state championships at Marta Day High School. Coached wow. by Gary McKnight, who's had a lot of great players. He told me, Stanley Johnson, the best he's ever coached. Moutier with the lead for Johnson. So Emmanuel Moutier, SMU, dropping one off to Stanley Johnson. Back the other way comes the future shooting guard, looking like a power forward, James Blackman, heading to Indiana. I like Blackman, his ability to stick it from long range to free some things up for Yogi Ferrell, who had to carry the entire offense for Indiana. Alexander fouled by Blackman. But Emmanuel Moutier from heading to SMU, he can set it up. Moutier loves the open floor. A little drop pass behind the back. Eyes in the back of my head. And Moutier loves the up and yes. down game, Fonz. He has to learn how to read the defense and make better decisions in the half court. Larry Brown's going to teach him that. Oh, without a doubt. And uh, he unfortunately lost Eric Snow. Eric Snow now the new head coach at FIU. But Larry Brown has done a terrific job with guards throughout the years. And just the little things, him learning how to be patient coming off of ball screens. But you have to love his versatility. He can post you up. He can get out in transition. And he can improve his jump shot. But he can knock it down if you leave him open. I'm talking with Moody yesterday, I thought it was interesting, the point that he made about Larry Brown and the honest answer that he gave. It's not all about college. It's not all about going pro. It's about both, realistically, for players at this level. And he looked at Larry Brown as that combo coach, that he will give you the best chance to succeed in college. He's obviously done that as a college coach. And he'll give you a great chance to prepare yourself for the NBA with his pro background as well. As long as Moody goes to SMU with a teachable spirit. Mm -hmm. He'll be good next year at SMU, and he'll be a great pro someday. No question about it. He has all the physical tools. Alexander can't hit from outside, but a takeaway by the future Louisville freshman, Shaquan Aaron, although he throws up an air ball from the corner. And you can vote for the Jordan Brand Classic East and West MVPs via Twitter. Just tweet with hashtag TakeFlightJBC and the player's last names. And our audience will be able to pick the players of the game from the respective teams. And Arizona recruits Stanley Johnson off to a pretty good start, making his case as he hits another three. 12 points already in this game. has knocked down two three balls to go along with it. Too strong on the baseline. The floater for Justin Jackson going to North Carolina. 
Instead, the other way, tough catch for Alexander. Gathers but can't convert. The takeaway. Towns is getting more aggressive. That floater won't go. Jackson with the offensive <laughs> rebound. Stanley Johnson called for the foul. He got three white shirts in the backcourt back there. Big guys are starting to get a little bit fatigued. It's interesting. As the basketball starts to really move and get energized, all of a sudden you get guys who are not used to getting up and down consecutive plays, all of a sudden a little winded. And now it's a hockey game as five <laughs> new players jump over the boards for the East and three new players in the game for the West. That floater a little too strong for Trey Lyles heading to Kentucky. It's out of bounds, and we have a timeout on the floor. Well, there were big stars in the Jordan Brand Classic last season. We'll flash back as the stars were bright in 2013. Last year in the Jordan Brand Classic, the top high school players in the nation were on display. Andrew Wiggins had 19 for the East. Jabari Parker finished with 16 points and seven rebounds. And he shared co-MVP honors with future Kentucky star Julius Randle, who had 19 points, seven rebounds. The West beat the East in a very competitive game, 102 to 98 and there was highlight play after highlight play the MVPs presented by Carmelo Anthony his Knicks teammate Amari Stoudemire in Brooklyn taking in the game tonight Victor Oladipo what a terrific rookie year for the Orlando Magic here as well and of course the namesake taking the game in from upstairs Michael Jordan <laughs> looking smooth as ever Bobcats Gonna make the playoffs this year. Yeah. Steve Clifford has done an amazing job as the new head coach for the Bobcats this year. They've done a very nice job of accumulating a lot of talent, and those pieces are starting to play really well together. Of course, they have Cody Zeller out there, and wow, just a really talented young team that has the potential to win for a long time. Kemba Walker stepping up as a star. Wow. Michael yes. Kidd Gilchrist mm -hmm. still defending and energizing his team. A couple of foul shots made by the number 27 player in our ESPN 100, Reed Travis, heading to Stanford. His brother plays at Harvard, so obviously no intelligence in that family. <laughs> and there's a full day of NBA playoffs on ESPN and ABC tomorrow. We start at 12.30 with the Nets taking on the Raptors. Then at 3, NBA countdown. And then Warriors Clippers on ABC. Back to ESPN, a nighttime doubleheader. Hawks Pacers, Grizzlies Thunder, four game ones tomorrow. The NBA playoffs underway. How about the job that Jason Kidd has done early in the season? Everyone wanted to have his head. <laughs> and those veteran players, Kevin Garnett and the crew, really stepping up, not only supporting him verbally, but supporting him on the floor with some fantastic play. Okafor will head to the line, and here are two players that I think we're going to see at least from time to time in the NBA playoffs this year, and they are alums of the Jordan Brand Classic. And they've gone on to notable careers, I would say. I, I'd say is that, lightly. Is that putting it mildly? Probably lightly. Yeah. Now, I'm not into stats all that much. Mm -hmm. Come on. But LeBron James was 13 for 30 in this game. He missed 17 shots, Fonz. 17. How do you miss 17 shots <laughs> in a game like this? You're LeBron James. It's a defense, man. Right? A lot of contested shots. You know, Paul, Good I know you're, that didn't affect his draft. Status. I was going to say, I, knew, I know you're the, the national director of high school recruiting, but at the pro level, he's made a couple of shots since then. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> That's why this game here is a lot of fun and it's exciting, but it's not one to evaluate from. Four on one and the finish inside eventually by Chris McCullough. Now, he's an interesting player. Yeah. yeah. Loaded with versatility and talent, headed to Syracuse. He's got the offensive game, he's got the bounce. He just got to go from potential to player. Well, and after losing C.J. Fair, he'll be able to step right in. I really like him a lot. His ability to shoot it from long range, he can put it down, he can block shots inside. I love, I think he reminds me a lot of a taller Wesley Johnson. He's got eye-popping athletic ability. There's no question about it. Mm -hmm. His problem is putting it all together, sure. being consistent. And you know, when you jump to that next level, it's all about consistency from high school to college. Kelly Oubre going to Kansas, finishes the three-point play. He's a New Orleans native, but had to relocate to the Houston area. 
nice. after Hurricane Katrina with his entire family. And there is the finish inside for the Syracuse recruit Chris McCullough, who has a chance to play in front of family and friends. He's from the Bronx, but spent some time at IMG Academy getting ready to play for Jim Beha. Rashad Vaughn from way outside, bottoms it out. How about that range for Rashad Vaughn going to UNLV? Heading to UNLV, a guy that can really score in bunches, has a scores mentality, and as you saw him that, he's got deep three-point range. He'll really help take the pressure off Bryce Jones. Shoulder a little bit of that offensive burden. The block inside. Oubre can't believe he was called for the foul, but it will be a chance at the line for Moutier. One pass and one dribble and up. Vaughn has the strength, the size, and the shooting ability to separate from his defenders. Deep range and accuracy. This guy is a three-level scorer. He can score from behind the line, mid-range, finds he can get to the rim. Rashad Vaughn. Oh, without a doubt. And I was talking about Bryce Jones earlier, who he will star with in the backcourt. I think they'll be a dynamic duo in that Mountain West Conference. And pardon me, it's Devin Booker at the line. The Mississippi Gatorade Player of the Year going to play for John Calipari at Kentucky. And Booker and Blackman in this game are the best two shooters in the entire senior class. Straight away, Reed Travis. He'll be trying to show that range in Palo Alto next year, going to Stanford. The follow won't go inside for Booker. The versatility of Oubre, the rebound, the push. Can't finish, but there is the follow by Okafor. Paul, you have to be impressed with Okafor's ability to change ends of the floor. I mean, he's gigantic and can still put on some size. I've been really impressed with his versatility and mobility. He's really improved in that area, conditioning, stamina. Tyus Jones just called for what might be the first traveling call in the history of the Jordan Brand Classic. Okafor wants to be more than just a low post player. By running the floor, you pick up the loose change off the glass, second chance points, the ability to run out in the fast break. I mean, he can rebound, he can score inside. He's got to go up and down the floor in trips to be really a dominant player. Nobody dominates the game like Okafor inside. His game demands a double team. And he's a willing and able passer out of the low post. It's gonna really open the floor for Duke next year. They're gonna be able to play multiple lineups. They can play small, they can play big with him and Miles Plumley. Uh, Marshall Plumley, excuse me. Winslow at the three. Shooters all around and Matt Jones, Rashid Suleiman. Yeah, yeah. Tyus Jones at the point. Mm -hmm. We spent the entire college basketball season breaking down Duke and what was the one common theme? They don't have that big man in the middle that Mike Krzyzewski has always had on his great teams and being able to play through. Well now, not only does he have a big man, he has the best big man in America coming to take that spot next year. And the best big man at Duke since Elton Brand maybe. I mean, this guy will create space on the floor. A defense is gonna have to run doubles at him and Fonz, they yeah. got shooters that can make shots. Well, They're we, going to be dangerous. Yeah, and, and Bob's right. I mean, they didn't have that inside score, but the other thing that they really struggled with, they couldn't defend the basketball. They could not keep guards from getting deep dri dribble penetration into the paint. Justice Winslow, he's a defensive stopper. He'll help that all of those wings and those guards be a little bit better defensively. He can play the three. He can play the four. Mm -hmm. He can switch on to a point yes. guard, a great switch defender. They yes. have answers next year, Duke. They have a lot of answers at every position. In a way, it's a shame that Jabari Parker has decided to go to the NBA yeah. because he was asked to play out of position. Yes. Really for what his true skill set is for almost the entire year by Mike Krzyzewski out of necessity. And he did an amazing job playing out of position. Yeah. Could you imagine if he could go back to what is more his natural comfort zone with Okafor there next year had he decided to stay? Well, he's going to be a top three pick in the NBA <laughs> draft, so it's hard, hard to argue with his decision to leave. And now... Ooh, Ulus, it looked like, or Ubre, pardon me, was poked in the eye. And he's going to try to shake it off as we take a closer look at what we've already seen Jalil Okafor do tonight. Blessed with a wide body, outstanding hands, and polished footwork. He can put a defender on his hip, on his back, feel him, 
make that post move and score. He's got a soft touch. And Fonz, he doesn't get his shot blocked because he puts that wide base into the shot blocker and finishes inside. It's all about being able to create separation. He does it extremely well. Foul called on McCullough. Paul, I, I can see why you like Tyus Jones. I, the one thing that I love about guards, when there's a smaller guard, I have two expectations of him. I expect him to be able to guard 94 feet to turn and put some pressure on the opposing guard, and I like to see him push on misses and makes, and you get all of those attributes in Tyus Jones. He's got to be better at defending. Hmm. He'll be the first one to tell you, Tyus Jones, he's not a great on-ball defender. But on the offensive end of the floor, he's special. Plays with his head up, you know, his eyes up. He sees the whole floor, every possession. You can almost read the play, you know, ahead of time. Nice. Sweet stroke from D'Angelo Russell, who'll be knocking him down from the wing next year for Thad Mata at Ohio State. Ohio State could have really used him, Bob, this last, this past season, because LaQuentin Ross wasn't as consistent as they would have liked him to been. And so he's going to be a nicely added scoring punch for the Buckeyes. Tyler Eulis heading to Kentucky lays it in. He's only five foot nine, but there were times during the McDonald's all-American game mm -hmm. where he dominated play. Uh, he controls the game. Now, when Tyler Eulis is in the game, he may be small, big heart. He controls the action, and all, and I mean all of his teammates, they respect him because they know he's got game. Sure. Gives Kentucky something that they didn't have last year, which is a speed guard at the point guard position. It's a six-point lead for the West, and on Sunday, a divisional battle at Fenway. The Orioles in Boston to take on Big Poppy and the Red Sox. Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell. Easter Sunday night at 7 Eastern. Also live on Watch ESPN. At Fenway Park, the best ballpark in America. Do you agree? He says with the Cliff Clavin accent. Right? Yeah. <laughs> How obvious is that? No, no, no. Bush Stadium. Oh, we beat you in 207. We yeah, got lucky. I, you had a heck of a series. <laughs> Come on. I, I grew up 10 minutes from Fenway. <laughs> we. And it's showing. <laughs> Again, if you hashtag take flight JBC with the last names of a player for the East and the West, head to Twitter and you can join our vote for the players of the game. Grayson Allen back in to run the point for the East. Number 21 in our ESPN 100 headed to Duke. And he finds his future Tyus teammate, Jones. Tyus Jones. Nice body control. Mm -hmm. Two dribbles, pull up, squares the shoulders, finishes the play. LJ Peak of the Georgetown called for the foul inside. Well, we have had lots of stars that have played the Jordan Bland Classic. We'll take a look back at 2007 when we come back. Back in Brooklyn, New York, Jordan Brand Classic, West up by four. We are joined by Stanley Johnson, who's headed to Arizona via modern day. Uh, off to a nice start. You got a dozen points already. What has clicked for you? Um, we're just trying to get down transition and run. I think we're all best like that. And I think we have the uh, advantage because we're playing me at the four. And, and we kind of switch up at the four and two. So I'm, we're playing everywhere. And we play me at the four. And I have, you know, bigger guys guarding me. I can beat him off the dribble and he can run. So For fans who haven't seen you play, how do you best characterize your style and what do you do well? Just get down transition and run and play physical and be versatile. So make shots too. Why was that? Arizona the right fit. It's Coach Miller. The way he recruited me and the way Coach Nashnack and Coach Cook recruited me was just the right thing for me. Your mom, Karen Taylor, she was a pro. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what impact has she had on, on your basketball career? Basketball came first. Um, I, I mean, after school, obviously, but um, she, she taught me since I was three, and she did a great job with that. I always kept the ball in my hand, so she taught me and made, made it fun for me, and now I love it. Yes, you do, and you're doing well. Keep it rolling. Bob. Well, Quentin, he was the Gatorade California Player of the Year, and heading to Kentucky. A former teammate of Andrew Wiggins on the under-19 Canadian national team, Trey Lyles with a lay-in. And now his future teammate at Kentucky, Tyler Eulis, can't bank one home. You just can't trap Eulis. He may be small, Fonz, but he can find you. Yeah, really speedy. And even when he gets in the gaps and you get a couple guys around him, he still has his eyes up, which is how he's able to find people open. Blackman fades away, and the Indiana guard is able to knock one down. I like the way Blackman put it on the deck, got to the open pocket with the pull-up. And he's a three-point shooter, but he's a big-time stroke. 
Rising up is Devin Booker. That won't go. And the rebound to Trey Lyles heading to Kentucky. Blackman, the future Hoosier. That's off the mark. And here comes Eulis. He'll be fun to watch it erupt next year as he tosses one up and throwing it down. Think about all is the Alexander? talent he's going to have next year to throw it to. Uh, Willie Colley-Stein running in transition, finding him off the backboard. Wow. Grayson Allen a little too strong. The West wants to run again. But the block inside by Trey Lyles. That frees up the counter. And Blackman is able to hand one off to Okafor. Your man running the floor. I can't, Jaleel Okafor. I can't say it enough. I'm so impressed with his mobility. You know, a lot of people were talking about him not being a real winner. A guy who could play well in the low post. Well, he wins the state championship. His team won at the McDonald's game. He was the co-MVP. Great dunk by Cliff Alexander. Yeah. His team won the Nike Hoop Summit. He's about winning. And big guys, as you know, Fonz, it's hard for them to make their team win unless they get the basketball. Without a doubt. You know what I was impressed with yesterday when we were at practice and we were talking to him after the uh, practice session yesterday is he he stands with such a poise with his hands crossed. He's really acknowledging you eyeball to eyeball. And my son Walter here, my 14-year-old, is here with me. And even after that, he said goodbye, Walter, instead of goodbye. It says a lot about his character and how polished he is as a young man. And off the rebound, check out Okafor, changing ends. Trying to get easy baskets by running hard. You talk about Okafor, he is high character, mm. low maintenance. A lot of guys in this class are like that. He's one of the best. Yeah, for some of the people at home, you may say, well, it's just a 260-pound guy running the floor. But what does that mean? In a basketball game, he's going to have other big guys guarding him. He's going to force them to have to run the floor offensively and defensively. They get tired. They have to go to their bench and bring in their secondary uh, line of defense against them, and he overpowers them. So that's the difference that he makes out on the floor. Chapman with a floater. That comes up short, but Cameron Chapman heading to Michigan. We'll head to the line to shoot a pair and spring football action from the SEC continues tomorrow on both the U and ESPN. Act two on ESPNU, the Alabama Crimson Tide will take the field in Tuscaloosa and then up the road at Auburn at three on ESPN. Nick Marshall leads the Tigers in their spring game. It's all tomorrow on ESPNU and ESPN. You can't Cameron Chapman talking to him yesterday about mm -hmm. what? his decision to go from Portland, Oregon to Ann Arbor <laughs> yeah. to play for Michigan was based on. And he said that he thinks that John Beeline's system, so much screening involved, really fit his style of play. Paul, from having watched him as much as I'm sure you have, you agree you think that he is a John Beeline type player? Oh, without question. In fact, he made a big jump in our rankings, jumped into the top 50. Wow. He's always under control. He has really good scoring instincts, and he also has instincts for the game. Left-handed, long, pretty good athlete, and he can score from behind the line, inside the arc, and he's crafty inside the paint. I really love his game. I think it's a steal for, for Michigan. You consider their team, they lose Nick Stauskas to the draft, they're losing Glenn Robinson to third, and they needed a perimeter player to come in and compliment Karis LeVert. I think Cameron Chapman is that guy. Don't forget about Zach Irvin now. Michigan, I love him. Yes. The block by Carl Towns, who at times goes by Carl Anthony Towns. Mm -hmm. I asked him yesterday, you want to be called Carl Towns? Do you prefer Carl Anthony Towns? He smiled and he said, you can just call me Tree. <laughs> I, I said, I like that. Maybe we'll go with that. Size 22 sneaker from St. Joe's Metuchen in New Jersey. Those are not normally the size you find on the rack when you go to pick up a pair for yourself. <laughs> yeah, he's got me beat. Uh, I wear size 16. He's six sizes ahead of me. <laughs> and Towns was the national Gatorade player of the year. That's a big time honor because it's a combination of basketball, academics, and character. Kyle Towns, he's got it all together. That floater by Grayson Allen heading to Duke. Ooh. And now Allen with a pretty hard foul on Devin Booker. So there's the Kentucky recruit that has to get up after that collision. Great. Grayson Allen, he won the dunk contest at the McDonald's game. He's got a three-point stroke. I've seen him just flush it on people at the rim. Now he shows you a little middle game. 
He's going to get some time. He's going to get some burn at Duke next year. Yeah, you and I were talking about who he reminded us of, and he reminded us of Bobby Sura. A little bit. You know, very athletic, can make shots. I don't think he's as good of a passer as Bobby Sura, but he can surely develop into it. I just love his mentality, Grayson Allen. When he goes to the rim, he's not trying to avoid contact. Mm. He's seeking it out and then trying to finish on you. Devin Booker at the line, son of Melvin Booker, played at Missouri, was the Big A player of the year, and spent 15 years as a pro. And now his son Devin heading to Kentucky. You talk about a knockdown shooter, Devin Booker. Yes. With all that size, Dakari Johnson, Marcus Lee, Willie yes. Cauley Stein, get Devin Booker shots. Especially with James Young now having declared for the NBA, they're going to need that perimeter touch, and he's the guy that, the, that can provide it. Pretty floater by the future Hoosier, James Blackman. I'd like to see those two guys like in a shooting contest, yes. Blackman and Booker. <laughs> we could put that on at halftime. We could. Why doesn't Indiana just play Kentucky, you know? Kentucky <laughs> play Indiana. Come on, guys. That's right. Get along and play <laughs> on campus. Blackman bounces one through traffic. And the patience inside, nicely done by Rashad Vaughn. He'll be going to UNLV. That's a big, strong scoring guard. That three won't go for Stanley Johnson. And here comes Grayson Allen. Rashad Vaughn lost the dribble, found it again, and finishes with the left hand. That's impressive. <laughs> My man can find the basket. Alexander rainbow three and that's not fair cliff Alexander six foot nine 240 pounds from Chicago heading to Kansas and he has a smooth three-point stroke haven't seen that a lot but we'll take it yeah. speaking of which <laughs> Grayson Allen I've seen his range cliff Alexander to 15 feet I've not seen him knock down a three ball but he's been shooting it with some confidence tonight I've Cameron seen Cliff Chapman with the lob and the throw down by Alexander. I've seen Cliff Alexander hurt your feelings <laughs> at the rim. I mean, he could, he's physical, aggressive. Yes. You don't want to get in his way. You know what I love about him, Paul? When he catches the basketball around the rim, he's not thinking about hook shots. He's not thinking about layups. He's trying to dunk that thing in your face, which is what you should do as a big around the rim. Moutier, no good. The long rebound to James Blackman. Weaving his way through traffic, draws the foul, and he'll shoot a pair when we return. Well, we've got female stars here tonight as well. The finals MVP, Maya Moore, who is taking in the stars of the future. And talk about versatility, Cliff Alexander. Cliff Alexander showing us a new element of his game, being able to knock down a three ball. We know how good he is around the rim. 19 points in this game so far. And he's Shroff back in the studio coming up at halftime. What Duke can expect from Tyus Jones and Jaleel Okafor next season. What SMU is getting in Emmanuel Moutier. And we sit down with Shabazz Napier from the UConn men and Stephanie Dolson from the UConn women. Bob. All right, Anish, thanks very much. It's Bob Wachusen here at Barclays Center. The Jordan Brand Classic along with Paul Biancardi, our ESPN National Director of Basketball Recruiting, LaFonso Ellis. And we have watched Cliff Alexander put on a show in the first half. He's a rebounder, finisher, and a shot blocker. He dominates the game in the paint. But we saw the three-point shot from the outside. If he can get a little bit of a face-up game, yes. oh, look out, Big 12, <laughs> look out. Because this guy brings it every single practice mm -hmm. every game high motor attacks the rim we talked about his ability and trying to dunk everything around the rim i think he perry ellis jamari trailer are going to make a strong front line for kansas and we know that bill self is excellent at developing uh, developing big men well the two you just saw squared off in high school cliff alexander at curie high school and julia loca at whitney young both in chicago and alexander at 20 points and 12 rebounds and led his team over Okafor and Whitney Young in the 2014 Chicago City Championship game. And their teammates in the summertime. The <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then their teammates in the summer, right. they play for the Mac Irvin Fire. Wow. That's not fair. No. Long jumper won't go for Chapman. Offensive rebound kept alive by Stanley Johnson. And Moutier flips it back out. Good hands, though. 
in the passing lane by Justin Jackson to knock it out. Justin Jackson heading to North Carolina. Three players in this game in Brooklyn tonight going to play for Roy Williams. I really like Justin Jackson. Pure shooter with range. He's got a nice mid-range game. High IQ, quick feet. I think he's going to be an outstanding defender. Long jumper. It's Justice Winslow getting on the board for the first time. He also is headed to Duke. What a lot of sweet looking lefty jumpers in this game as Ubre hits. And now Ubre commits the foul at the other end as we take a look at that incoming class for Roy Williams and North Carolina. Loaded with versatility. Justin Jackson, you talked about him being a defender, Fonz. Great offensive player in terms of efficiency. Yeah. He can score 20 points in just about any game on 10 shots. Theo Pinson, outstanding athlete, can handle the basketball, will be a good defender at North Carolina. Joel Berry, who we're not seeing tonight, a leader and a winner. State champions at Lake Highland Prep back to back. You know, three time Mr. Basketball in the state of Florida. Uh, Roy Williams is going to be really happy when those guys get to campus. Well, I think uh, Joel Berry is going to have a tremendous impact because he'll allow Marcus Pace to play off the basketball and be the scorer that we know he can be. And, and he'll push Marcus Page in practice. You got Nate Britt. Roy That's Williams good. has three point guards next year. Good problem to have, huh, former coach Ben Cardi? Well, remember when Kendall Marshall got hurt and they were making their run to the NCAA championship? They had to play a walk-on. He didn't have a backup, so that problem's never going to happen again. <laughs> That's a good point. James Blackman comes up short. Shaquan Aaron behind the back, tried to hand one off to Stanley Johnson. And back the other way instead come the East. And the throw down by Reed Travis. He'll be going to Stanford. Love the unselfish play out there. With Stanford losing Dwight Powell, they really needed someone like Reed Travis. Reed happens to be really good friends with my nephew, Jacob Savano, and my son, PJ's back home watching. So those three guys have uh, developed a little relationship. Jake, in fact, told me that one of the most impressive things about that young man is his work ethic. They had 6.30 practices in the morning. Reed Travis would be there at 5.15, already soaking wet, having gone through a full routine. That says something about his work ethic. We are tied at 69, and we head back now to 2004 in College Park. There were some big men you may have heard of that played the Jordan Brand Classic, including Dwight Howard, 18 points, 15 rebounds. He was named the game's MVP. Rajon Rondo had 12 points, and that feed to Al Jefferson, who had a double-double, 17 and 10 for Jefferson. As the visitors beat the home team, 107 to 96. And ever since then, Al Jefferson and Dwight Howard, they've scored a few points, grabbed a few rebounds on their day. <laughs> and we were talking about Charlotte earlier. Yeah. We didn't mention Al Jefferson. Yes, right. That's our bad. Yeah. I mean, he's been a guy they could throw it to in the post, and he's delivered. They were able to acquire him from the Utah Jazz, which was a huge acquisition, and obviously it's paid off well. Well, they weren't sure if they were going to do that or just play for the lottery. Yeah. Uh, good thing they got Jefferson. What does a week like this do for these players? Not just playing in this game, but the experience, like the McDonald's week, the Nike Hoop Summit. Now you get a chance to practice and work out against the other best players in America. How does this prepare you for the next level? I think it really sharpens you because daily you're going against the best players out there and you can't, you can ill afford to take a day off because you get embarrassed out on the outside. So I think it builds your grit. I think it builds your mental toughness and takes your overall game to that next level. Kelly Oubre hits another three. Oubre, of course, headed to Kansas. He'll be outside while Cliff Alexander is inside, and that's not a bad one-two punch for Bill Self. You know, now is when the time these guys got to start working, when they get on yeah. campus in June. This is all fun and games. But practice is going to be like this, but more serious. Nice. Beating the buzzer with the follow is Theo Pinson going to North Carolina. And that ends a very high scoring, as you would expect, first half in the Jordan Brand Classic. It's a one-point lead for the East. Let's check in with Quinn. Jaleel Okafor, 15 and 7. Why have you been so successful? Uh, I'm just running the floor, playing as hard as I can, trying to compete. What do you think is going to make the difference in the second half? Uh, defense. Uh, both teams are getting a lot of fast break points, so, you know, whoever defends in the second half is better will win. Thank you. High scoring game here in Brooklyn. Defense has been sold separately. Swing things to an Eastroff. 
Quinn, thank you very much. Yes, 72 points for the East, 71 for the West. Defense optional, but that's what we expect in these exhibitions with some incredible young talent. And East Shroff here in the ESPNU studios in Charlotte. We'll talk to Paul Biancardi momentarily, but first, in case you missed it, let's get you caught up on the first half action. It is the Jordan Classic, after all. Michael Jordan, six-time champ as Bobcats in the playoffs. Jaleel Okafor, top recruit in the land. He's Duke bound. Cliff Alexander leading the West team, number three recruit. He is Kansas bound. There is Okafor showing off his vast wardrobe of post moves. And then in transition, Duke fans get used to this. Tyus Jones to Okafor. Those two will be playing together at Cameron Indoor next season. Kelly Oubre misses. He's Kansas bound. Okafor there for the follow. That tied the game at 39. Both teams would continue to score and keep scoring 72-71 East. That is your score at the half. The Jordan Brand Classic includes 26 players. All 26 are amongst the top 40 players in the ESPN 100, and that includes all 10 players on the ESPN 100's top 10 list. We now bring in Paul Biancardi. We don't let him rest even at halftime. Paul, uh, two of the top four players in the ESPN 100 who we saw in the first half, Duke Bound, Tyus Jones, and Jaleel Okafor. They'll be playing together for Coach K next season. What can we expect from them in year one in Durham? Well, I think they're going to impact the program. The most important positions on the floor, center and point guard, are now covered by the best two high school players in the nation. With Tyus Jones, you know, he's not a pass-first only type point guard. He can score the ball if you leave him alone. And Duke has so many weapons next year with Matt Jones and Grayson Allen and Justice Winslow and Rashid Suleiman. Then you put the big fella inside, Jaleel Okafor. His game will demand the double team from the opponents. Then he's going to throw out, repost up. You throw it back inside. Coach K is going to have a low post presence that he hasn't had a niche since Elton Brand. It's a long time. Paul, what convinced Emmanuel Moutier to stay at home and go to SMU and play for Larry Brown? I think it's the resume of Larry Brown. Uh, winning a national championship at Kansas, also winning an NBA championship with the Pistons. Look, he's a Hall of Fame coach, and Moutier has a teachable spirit. He wants to learn the game. He needs to learn how to read the game, and Larry Brown convinced him that he could make him good in college and prepare him for the next level. He's one of the few guys in the class, Anish, that can be a one and done. Moutier, number two point guard in his class, number five overall. And finally, uh, the million-dollar question. Miles Turner is the only top 50 player that is uncommitted. Right now, and I know Miles Turner has kept this pretty tightly sealed. If, if you were to guess now, where do you think he ends up? That's so hard because Duke, Kansas, Ohio State, not trying to avoid the question, <laughs> Texas, the home school. I mean, they got the last visit. He said they were going to get the last visit, and they did. Now, he also visited SMU unofficially. Can you imagine Moutier or Miles Turner? And you have Nick Moore back next year for SMU. He's got a really hard choice to make. And he's got wonderful options everywhere. And wherever he goes, there's going to be competition in the middle. But wherever he goes, he's going to impact that program. Turner, the number two recruit in the ESPN 100. And if he goes to SMU, there's a good chance that team won't be left on the bubble when Selection Sunday rolls around. <laughs> Paul B. and Cardi, we look forward to more of the second half from you and the gang in Brooklyn. Still to come, we will talk to the king and the queen of the big dance. Shabazz Napier and Stephanie Dolson break down each other's, you guessed it, dance moves. Arizona bound Stanley Johnson with 13 in the first half. Stella! Both the UConn men's and women's basketball teams celebrated an NCAA championship earlier this month. And we're joined now by two of the biggest stars in stores, Shabazz Napier and Stephanie Dolson. Shabazz, I will start with you. You made the comments after the championship that there were nights you went to bed hungry. What do you make now of the NCAA changing its rules so that student athletes have access to unlimited meals? I think it's a great rule. Um... Of course, when I said it, I, it kind of got blown out of proportion. Um, you know, they, they was kind of emphasizing the word starving. You know, I said it only one time, and I was rambling off at the end to say what I said in the beginning. So, uh, but, you know, 
you know, I think there needs to be some type of person that's going to talk for the student athletes because we are very important. And um, but you know, this this action that they're kind of trying to put in place is definitely something good for the student athletes that's going to be, you know, you know, in the place that we were in before. What coach is easier to play for, Kevin <laughs> Ollie or Gino Oriema? Gino Oriema is yeah, easier. I think uh, Coach Ollie is definitely easier. <laughs> stock, stock answer. What? Coach Ollie takes you out, right, when you do something wrong? No, I, I think he's much easier. I don't, we don't have a lot of pressure. <laughs> I, I will say that, Stephanie. We did see an emotional Gino after the championship. We don't see that often. How were you guys able to crack him? Um, <laughs> I don't know, to be honest with you. I think we've just been through so much, you know, Bri and I and Coach Oriema and um, to see him that emotional definitely got me emotional too when I saw it and uh, it's actually funny I was sitting behind him when he was talking and I was like what's wrong with him like why isn't he talking <laughs> and then when I found out that he was getting emotional you know it just kind of touched my heart and you know kind of made me feel honored uh, to be coached by someone like him. Stephanie after you guys won the championship you also challenged President Obama to a dance-off. I'm not going to pose this question to you but to Shabazz. Shabazz can she win a dance-off with the president? Most definitely. Yeah, I mean, have you not seen her moves? <laughs> she has, uh, you know, uh, incredible moves. She's, she's just, uh, uh, she enjoys it, and uh, I don't think uh, President Obama got moves like her. <laughs> Before we let you guys go, Stephanie, what kind of dancer is Shabazz? <laughs> oh, he's a pretty exciting dancer, I got to say. He's got some moves of his own. I don't think he's as outwardly nah, uh, <laughs> dancing as I do, you know, as much as I do, but... Um, He's got some secret moves. He's pretty solid. All right, that might be what we have to see first, a dance-off between Stephanie and Shabazz. Again, thank you guys for being great sports. Congratulations on a great season, and best of luck in the next chapter of your lives. Thank, thank you. you. UConn men and women winning a championship. It's happened before. It happened in 2004 for the men. Fourth national title all since 99. The second lowest seed to win a title for the women. The ninth championship in school history and the fifth time the ladies went undefeated. Duke bound Jaleel Okafor, 15 points in the first half. The only player in the history of the Jordan Classic with at least 30 in the game, LeBron James. Both Alabama and Auburn play their spring games tomorrow. Auburn, last year's national runner-up, will play at 3 Eastern on ESPN. Bama at 2 Eastern on ESPNU. Cliff Alexander, the Kansas-bound power forward, leads all scores with 19 points in the first half. East leads West by one. Welcome back to Brooklyn, and welcome back to the Jordan Brand Classic. As expected, a high-scoring and competitive first half. The East All-Stars lead the West in the 2014 Jordan Brand Classic here at Barclays Center in New York. Bob Wischusen alongside Paul Biancardi, our ESPN National Director of High School Basketball Recruiting, former Notre Dame legend, LaFonso Ellis as well, and we saw some future legends in the making already in this first half. We pointed out how the big men were going to show up tonight, and they didn't disappoint the first half. They were able to really get after each other early. Started with Jalil Okafor when he caught the basketball down in the low post. The point of his game that I'm so impressed with is his poise. Very patient when he catches it. I love his mobility as well. Can get out and finish. That's going to cause a lot of problems when he gets to Duke. But somebody has to get him the basketball. And Tyus Jones, when he makes a pass, it usually leads to an assist. This guy has to throw ahead pass in the open floor. He navigates well in pick and rolls. And if you run the floor, Fonz, he's going to find you. He does. And guys that can run the floor and get on the offensive glass are guys like Cliff Alexander. Had an outstanding first half. 19 points. Has shown us some range. The ability to stick it from the three-point line. But the thing I love about him, he controls the paint with his ability to block shots. Four block shots in the first half. Two Chicago big men that squared off against one another in high school, Jaleel Okafor and Cliff Alexander, and they are the game's two high scorers. So a very entertaining first half. We're expecting an equally entertaining second half, and not only our broadcast here on ESPN2, but also tonight's game available on ESPN3 Surround. It's a new exclusive second screen experience on ESPN3. 
featuring unique camera angles, audio feeds, and crowd cams. So a different look if you'd like to head over to E3 and join us there as well. Talked about the two bigs being from Chicago. I'm from Illinois as well. The southern portion of the state represented tonight. You're just partial to big men, period. Absolutely. About time we get some good low dominant low post big men in the college game. Started by Julius Randle. He was incredible last year. Theo Pinson heading to North Carolina scored the first points of the second half and then Tyler Eulis Kentucky point guard with the foul. And there's Cliff Alexander again number three on our ESPN 100 heading to Kansas starts the second half on the bench. We don't expect him to be there for long. Nice look though by Grayson Allen as he sets up Carl Towns. Towns also going to Kentucky number nine in our ESPN 100. I love their class put together by John Calipari and his staff number two in the nation. A lot of skill in that class. All those guys can score Lyles Towns yeah. Uless, yeah. and Devin Booker can stroke it indeed. Talk about guys that can play. I think Stanley Johnson is going to have a huge second half. Those guys who have high motors tend to play well in the second half of these games when fatigue becomes a factor. When you look at that class going to Kentucky, all those guys can score against the set defense. Hmm. Some are athletic, but they're all guys that can score the basketball. John Calipari has answers now. The shooting guard, you leave Tyler Eulis alone as the point. He's going to knock down threes. Lyles and Towns, oh my goodness, you got Dakari Johnson coming back. Mm -hmm. Marcus Lee, Willie Cauley Stein. Yeah, impressive. I mean, they're going to be able to really score the ball, I think, even easier next year. Well, John Calipari thinks that Tyler Eulis could lead the country in assists and easily. <laughs> initially, I was kind of like, huh, I'm not so sure about that. But when you think about the pieces around him and the guys that can put the basketball in the hole, it's, it's not too inconceivable. Just throw it up near the rim. <laughs> and Eulis will do that. I mean, he he's a facilitator. Yes. But don't look at his size and see 5'9 and say, you know what? He's not going to fit in the SEC. Guess what? He's going to pick up that ball 94 feet, pressure it, play a faster pace next year in well, Kentucky. And, there, and Paul, to your point, there's only a few coaches around the country who will really take advantage of a mismatch and take their guard down the low post with Eulis. When you talk about the guys that are behind him, like a Willie Cauley Stein, he can get up into the basketball pressure. If he's beaten, they got some guys who can go get it and block and alter shots in the paint. Finger roll by Grayson Allen, the Duke point guard. Able to go coast to coast. Did I just see Bobby Sura? <laughs> yes, I mean, he yeah. reminds us so much of Bobby Sura. Yeah. The back tap ends up with Daniel Hamilton, who's headed to UConn. Now that guy can score buckets. Kevin Ollie just got to polish his game up a little bit. He can't shoot every time he touches it. But Daniel <laughs> Hamilton is a big time, and I mean big time shot maker. I mean, you look about him combining with Ryan Boatwright, a guy who can make shots anywhere on the floor. That's going to be a pretty good tandem. Towns with the rebound. Justin Jackson, number eight in our ESPN 100, part of that North Carolina recruiting class for Roy Williams. And a timeout call. I'd love to call him Mr. Efficiency, Justin Jackson. How about this AAU team for the Houston Hoops? Justin Jackson, Kelly Oubre, and Justice Winslow. Wow. Try beating those guys in the summer. And all those guys can get after you on the defensive end as well. But we talked about his versatility earlier. Pure shooter with range. The thing I like about him, he plays with great pace. Even when you get a secondary defender coming over to give some help, he never rushes. Always playing under control. And when you have, when you can score left hand and right hand when you get near the basket, no need to rush. Well, Justin Jackson was one of the MVPs of the McDonald's All-American game. He led the East with 23 points in Chicago and now in Brooklyn tonight has put on a display as well and that was a quiet 23 at yes. the McDonald's game yes and again you can vote for the Jordan brand classic East and West MVPs via Twitter just go on Twitter to hashtag take flight JBC with the players last names send us your opinions and we'll tally the votes and see who you think should be the MVPs for both the East and the West a little bit later on in the second half. I have Justice, Justin Jackson starting next year at Carolina. I don't know how you keep him out of the starting line. I, I don't know how you keep him out either. You think about this team, what, what were they missing last year? They were missing a guy like a P.J. Harrison who could stroke the basketball. Justin Jackson will fill that void. Chance for a three-point play for Trey Lyles. 
Part of the Kentucky recruiting class for John Calipari. Trey Lyles is so effective in the low yeah, post. Yeah. He has the shot fake. Mm -hmm. He has all the post moves that you want in a block player. Then you put him to the face-up game. You see the drive. Yeah. He can shoot it. Good IQ for the game. And he's a native of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. It's amazing. We talked about the influx of talent, not only in maybe some spots we don't think of as traditional basketball hotbeds in the U.S., like Seattle in the first half. How about the Canadian talent yeah. in basketball that has invaded the collegiate picture in America over the past, say, decade or so? Invaded is a good word. I mean, Andrew Wiggins. How about Tyler Ennis? You know, he played great in this game last year. People don't talk about him because of Gordon, Parker, and Randall. You got Ennis, you got Wiggins. Think about all the great players to come out of Canada yeah. in our college game. And now Corey Joseph, Tristan Thompson. Tristan Thompson. Hamlin at Boston College. Right, so uh, many from the Toronto area yeah. specifically. Yeah. yeah. Guy you want to know for next year is Gil Caesar plays at Huntington Prep. Nice Look pass. at the behind the back <laughs> scoop by <laughs> Carl Towns. <laughs> That's for the home folks Pretty. from New Jersey. By the way, that's six foot eleven, acting like the behind the back point guard. But when you don't run back on defense, he had four options where that basketball can land. Could have landed. I mean, how about that pass by Stanley Johnson? Drives the baseline, drive, drift. Blackman able to finish as he warded off contact, and again, it was Carl Towns playing quarterback with the assist. Blackman put the shoulder. Right into the defender, eliminated that block shot. Explosive move by Stanley Johnson draws the foul. This might be a Sports Center top 10 nominee here for Carl Anthony Towns. St. Joe's Matuchin heading to Kentucky behind the back. <laughs> On the money, too. And he didn't even see him there. You knew that. He was just throwing it to the rim. That's pretty. You know, it's also frightening about Carl Towns. He's six foot 11. We talked about the fact that he's got a size 22 sneaker. Talking to him yesterday, he said in his last physical, the doctor told him the potential to grow another inch to possibly four more inches wow. still exists. And he's 6'11 now. You know what's interesting about that, Bob? That's interesting that you bring that point up. I didn't know that, but when I've watched him on film and watched him yesterday in practice, if you, when, when I went through a very big growth spurt, I went from 6'2 to 6'8 when I was 15 years of age, and I could barely walk and get up and down the floor well. And I'm looking at him in practice yesterday and in film, he really doesn't get up the, down the floor that well, which suggests that he possibly could grow another three or four inches, just clearly his bones, tendons, and muscles haven't caught up with one another in that process. No, I understand. I went from 6'1 to 6'2 when I was in high school, and I could feel that, you know, pain in my legs. <laughs> Took you four years, though. That was freshman to senior. Woo! Pretty. Emmanuel Moutier heading to SMU, staying home, as a matter of fact, in Dallas to play for Larry Brown. But your point about Towns, he doesn't even know how to use his body right now. No. I mean, he still struggles against Okafor, and right there against Cliff Alexander. He's not strong enough yet. But he's got so much skill. How about my boy Moutier, my favorite point guard in this class? Explosive. Look at the fine 360 Sports Center. Da -da -da, da -da -da. The Jordan Brand Classic. We continue to remember some of the great all time alums of this game. How about 2003? Producing Chris Ball and LeBron James. Just across the river in Brooklyn from Manhattan. It's the Jordan Brand Classic here at Barclays Center. The West trailing the East by seven. High scoring as you would expect. And Justin Jackson showing right and left versatility already in the second half. Well, he's got deep range for a three-point shot. He can finish at the rim with length and athletic ability. You put him in the mid-range, and he can knock that down as well. The best mid-range shooter in this senior class. Nice spinning move by the SMU recruit Emmanuel Moutier, born in Kinshasa, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and moved to the States when he was six years old. His parents and the rest of his family trying to escape the political troubles over there. And now, what a great example of a a true success story. You move from really 
a war-torn area of Africa over to the U.S. And 14 years later, Emmanuel Moutier on his way to possibly not only a college scholarship, but also the NBA. Yeah, great story. My old teammate, Dikembe Mutombo, obviously, is from Kinshasa as well, and so would tell me about some of the horror stories over in this country. In fact, during our time together in Denver was when they started to have some political unrest, and Dikembe's father was involved as a politician there, and they actually had to remove his family from Kinshasa. And so, to your point, what a wonderful story about this young man, Emmanuel. Emmanuel Moutier, who's going to have an outstanding career at SMU. And at SMU also, his brother Jean Michael's going to be playing there next year with the Mustangs as well. Oh, A throwback. Cliff Alexander rejects Okafor, and that creates the easy deuce at the other end for Devin Booker headed to Kentucky. But Alexander, the Kansas recruit, guarding the rim, and no one guards the rim. <laughs> Where was Cliff then? That's about it. He was tired. And when Cliff Alexander does something on the floor, everybody knows, because he does it with authority and aggressiveness. Moutier, no good from outside. Talk about SMU next year. Nick Moore in the backcourt. Yes. Marcus yes. Kennedy in the front yes. court. And pay attention to this guy, Ben Moore, going to be a sophomore next year out of Chicago. I think he's going to have a breakout season for Larry Brown. Is that really is good. That, is that another one of those good Illinois players? Another one of those good guys. <laughs> fine. He's 6'8 skilled, not like you. You were 6'8 inside, my friend. I was 6'8 unskilled, only in the post. Tyus Jones heading to Duke, running the point right now. Throws a wild one for... His future Duke teammate, Jelly Lokavor, but it's deflected out of bounds. Now this is a rejection. When he does it, you feel it. <laughs> I mean, you don't just see it. Look at it. You feel that. Okafor doesn't, he doesn't want any part of him right now. There goes Cliff again. This time commits the foul, but Cliff Alexander did not play organized basketball until the eighth grade. Wow. So, Paul, when you look at his game, and obviously, he has played an immense amount of basketball since on the AAU circuit and at the highest level of the Chicago Public Leagues. Now he's on his way to Kansas, but how much further can he come? I think he can polish his offensive game a lot. I mean, we know he beats you with his effort and his energy, the ability to finish lobs at the rim. He beats you to the glass for rebounding. And we can see how he can block shots. But he has to work, Bob, on his skill. He has to be able to make a post move against the defender. But when you look at Cliff Alexander, Kelly Oubre, Kansas, they have two of the best athletes in this entire class next year. I, I, I love Cliff Alexander because he has something that you can't teach. He has toughness and a motor. And he and being able to block shots the way he does, he's an instinctive rebounder. I don't like all of those attributes that he's bringing to the table. I can teach him offense, and Bill Self's one of the best in college basketball at develop, developing talent. Especially post-talent. Indeed. I mean, that high-low game is second to none in college basketball. Foul called on the drive. D'Angelo Russell headed to Ohio State, heading to the line. And on Sunday, we head to Fenway. A divisional battle in the AL East between the Orioles and Red Sox. Chris Davis and Big Poppy will square off. Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell on ESPN at 7 Eastern. Also live on Watch ESPN. So I have one guy sitting next to me from Boston. I have another guy that went to Boston College. And we're talking about, you know, we're talking about the, 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 the Orioles or we're talking about the Red Sox. Can the St. Louis Cardinals get any love tonight? No. No. Wow. <laughs> Simple answer. <laughs> we're the best team in the league right now. Nice maneuver inside. As Cameron Chapman able to finish. A little step back fadeaway won't go for Rashad Vaughn heading to UNLV and back the other way, weaving his way through traffic. Nice no look pass. Uh, that was terrific for D'Angelo Russell as that model will have him as a playmaker and a sweet outside shooter next year. No question about it. You talk about versatility. D'Angelo Russell could play the point, slide over, play the two. He's a pure shooter, great facilitator. I love his vision. And he's so unselfish. He, he wants to give up the basketball. Paul, I watched him yesterday, and I was really impressed with his ability to handle pick and roll situations. Very patient, reads, reads what's it available, well. yep. and, and to your point, is an excellent passer. An easy one for Kelly Oubre. Oubre is going to be an outstanding yeah. two way player. Mm -hmm. I mean, he could finish at the rim, makes threes, doesn't have an in between game right now, but a 7 2 wingspan. 
he is going to be a great defender for Bill Self. Really good positional shot blocker, yeah. too, with that wingspan. The but fadeaway won't go for D'Angelo Russell. Nice. And it doesn't get much easier for Jaleel Okafor. Look at him run back on defense, though. Nice. Booker, stutter step. It's knocked away. Here comes Tyus Jones. Whips a pass down the lane to Okafor. Duke to Duke. The assist to the finish. Okafor with another two. And the East opens up a 14-point lead. Now, we know there's no defense in this game, yeah. but it still takes effort to run the floor like that. Okafor is in the best shape of his entire career. Looks fantastic. I mean, that's three consecutive plays. Sprinted, got a layup, sprinted back to play defense, and then sprinted up the floor to get another layup. Check out D'Angelo Russell heading to Ohio Ooh. State to give up. First, he has to break a few ankles on the way, Fonts. That is pretty. The no-look lefty pass underneath, and the finish gorgeous. There are other playmakers in this game as well. Let's take a look at Emmanuel Moutier, the Dallas native heading to SMU. My favorite point guard in the class is 6'5", can see over the top, excellent vision and passer. And this is what I like, his ability to go down in the low post and a few smaller guards has all the moves when he gets into the paint. When he drives that basketball, he's trying to get a piece of the paint. Yes. And then when he's in the lane, he's strong enough to finish. He's got the peripheral vision to find Larry Brown's going to polish him up, make him into a true point guard. Absolutely. He only lives 20 minutes away from the SMU campus, so it was a natural fit. Also, who better to prepare you not only to be a great college player, but also for the next level than Larry Brown? And then trying to play playmaker was D'Angelo Russell. It ends up with Stanley Johnson. Alexander got caught in midair, bailed out by a foul. That foul called on Jolly Okafor. Under 11 minutes to go in the Jordan Brand Classic. It's been a very entertaining night here at Barclays Center. Jordan Brand Classic, second year here in Brooklyn, New York. The two teams have combined for over 200 points, and we still have 11 minutes to play. Our host this week, president of the Jordan Brand, is Larry Miller. What is the importance of this game for the Jordan brand? Well, for the brand, this is an opportunity for us to showcase uh, Jordan performance basketball. Uh, you know, people know us a lot for um, the retro shoes and the shoes that Michael played in. This, this game is really uh, an opportunity for us to showcase new product, um, to really, and, and to, to me, this game represents Jordan because you've got performance on the court and then the culture of basketball going on around the court. These athletes have been here since Tuesday. What are some of the other activities that you hope resonate with their experience? Well, one of the things we always try to do uh, with this game when we bring the athletes in is make it more than just the game. Uh, we get them involved in some community events. Uh, we get them out to do some things that they wouldn't normally get to do at a game like this. And uh, we hope that that resonates with them. We also try to share uh, some insights with them, not just about basketball, but about their careers beyond basketball, about going to school, about life in general. So we try to make it a complete uh, package and a complete event for the kids. Adding value to the experience. Thank you, Larry. Definitely. Thank you. Bob. All right, Quinn, thanks very much. And, Paul, you were talking not only about Kelly Oubre, as we're going to take a look at a terrific athlete heading to Kansas, but about this group as a whole. And where the kind of the intellectual level of this group collectively is, it is a really well-spoken, uh, great representative group for the Jordan Brand class. Yeah, my five years with ESPN covering the high school scene, this has to be the group that has the highest character, the lowest maintenance. There's really no guys here with attitudes or entitlement. And every year you're going to have some guys that have that. Uh, usually with the alpha dog mentality, sometimes comes the entitlement. But this group is hardworking, high character, and, and they respect the game funds. And, and that's what I really like about them, the way they play hard and respect the game. Yeah, humility and class over the last two days that I've observed is really what defines this group. It, you know, when you compare it to 2013, 
You can't, because that, that class has star power. The Wiggins, the Randall, the Gordon. But this class could be underrated at the end of the day for college basketball. Moutier with a chance for a three-point play. That's that burst that we talked about. He is exceptional in full court because what happens is he has the speed to be able to change directions. And if he gets you on his shoulder or his hip, he can control you. And at 6'5 and nearly 200 pounds, he is a beast when he gets it around the painted area. You can't keep my legs too strong. You know, this class is kind of unique in 2014. Top three guys, all bigs. You don't see that in a class. Good point. And then the versatility of the shooting guards and the small forwards. We've seen that all night with Oubre and Pinson and Justin Jackson and D'Angelo Russell. A lot of value coming to the college game. Something I thought that you said that was interesting yesterday watching the practices is that this is a class that is extremely valuable on the college basketball scene. That this is not necessarily the mass exodus one and done class. But college basketball fans, if they educate themselves about these players and these names, they're going to have more than one year to enjoy most of the guys that are playing in this game when they go to their respective colleges as Moutier sets up Stanley Johnson. There's going to be a handful that are going to go on to as the always. NBA, as always. But college basketball is going to get a chance to enjoy these guys over time. Now, some could develop into stars that get drafted before their seniors. But I see the college game is really, really healthy next year and exciting in the future. Paul, is it fair to say that last year and the previous year's group was maybe more athletic than this group? Because just watching them over the last couple of days, uh, I don't see that tremendous athleticism, the speed and the ability to get in the air and finish at the rim. It's, it's few and far between. You have Moutier, Cliff Alexander, mm -hmm. you have Kelly Oubre. Stanley Johnson's very powerful. Yes. Justice Winslow. But there's nobody like Jaleel Okafor inside at the right. basket. This class is more skilled, Fonz, than athletic. Yes. Spin moves at both ends as Okafor heading to Duke finishes at one end. And Moutier going to SMU will go to the line at the other. And spring football action from the SEC continues tomorrow on ESPNU and ESPN at 2. On ESPNU, it's Alabama. And then at 3, Nick Marshall will be over on ESPN leading the Auburn Tigers in their spring football game. ESPNU and ESPN, the Iron Bowl spring football day tomorrow on both of our networks. Here's that spin move by Okafor. That's terrific footwork by the big fella, which is why I'm so excited about what he's going to bring to Duke. A guy who can play with his back to the basket. You can ISO him up on the elbow area, and he can make a play. He's a willing passer as well. I am so impressed by seeing him now with my own two eyes here on this floor. At the Nike Hoop Summit, the NBA scouts we're talking about him more than anyone else because there's nobody in the college game. Think about it right now. Right. Who in the college game has his low post dominance? No one. Macklemore is the post game concert tonight here in Brooklyn, and he is already taken to Twitter. Hashtag take flight JBC with the last names of the players from the East and the West that you think should be the team MVPs, and we'll tally up those results and talk about it before the game's over. Here's D'Angelo Russell heading to Ohio State. Sets up Johnson. Stanley Johnson going to Arizona comes up short and the rebound to Okafor. Didn't quite get on balance on that, Jay. I'm, I'm big with young people with balance. He's got to come to a little jump stop and then elevate. He's part of a top recruiting class for Arizona. Craig Victor, Powell forward. Parker Jackson Cartwright is going to join him as a point guard. Sean Miller has owned the West Coast in recruiting <laughs> since he left Xavier. Play gets a little sloppy, and with seven and a half minutes to go, we have a timeout with the East on top by 15 in the Jordan Brand Classic here in Brooklyn. And we continue to look back at some of the great classes that have come through this game. How about 2002? Amari Stoudemire and Carmelo Anthony, both Jordan Brand Classic All-Stars that year. The 2014 Jordan Brand Classic is brought to you by Jordan Brand and in part by Gatorade, official sports nutrition provider of the Jordan Brand Classic and Upper Deck, celebrating 25 years of quality, innovation, and authenticity.
back in Brooklyn, New York, Jordan Brand Classic, Carmelo Anthony all over the newspapers here in New York City as he enters free agency in July. And Macklemore is here. He's going to be playing after the game. And I'm actually sitting between Fabulous, the rapper from Brooklyn, and Joel Embiid, who played in this game last year. What was your experience like last year? I mean, it was fun just playing against uh, the other guys, Jamar Parker, Andrew Wiggins, uh, and the other guys. I mean, it was fun. And for me, it was, a, it was big because it was kind of like my coming out party. That's where people, uh, everybody saw me. So yeah. You blocked some shots in that ball game. What's the last year been like? I mean, you go from kind of a late bloomer to being a, a big-time recruit to now being on the cusp of going to the NBA, NBA. what's it been like? Uh, I mean, it's been the same. I, t I try to keep uh, my my head on my feet. Uh, so it's been. I mean, uh, it's been the same. Uh, there's not nothing has changed. What stands out about about this class of, of athletes you're watching? Uh, I mean, uh, all I see, they're all athletic. They all want to compete. So I think that's a good class. They don't have to deal with you next year. <laughs> no, they won't. <laughs> Back to you, Bob. All right. Well, they will, Quint, have to deal with Cliff Alexander, who will be taking the place of Joel Embiid in the pivot at Kansas. But, Lafonso, when you think about Embiid and where he was a year ago, where he is now, the injury he dealt with at Kansas, now going pro, size up his future as an NBA player. I watched him throughout the year. I thought early in the season he just wasn't confident out there on the floor. And we talked about Bill Seth's ability to take post guys and develop them throughout their careers. Well, I thought Bill Seth did an amazing job in one single season with Joel Embiid and instilling confidence in him. They were giving him the basketball down the floor. You actually start to make some moves instead of just a little hook shot over the top. So I think the sky's the limit. I think. At any day, Bob, it comes down to your willingness to work at your game day in and day out. And that's, I, I, I've shifted a little bit, Bob. I used to be pro, pro academics, pro, pro school. No, you need to stay. I've shifted a little bit now. I think the, 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 the development of the kids is more available at the pro level because now it's your job and you have people who are paid to be with you 24-7 to help you become the best player that you can be. That's a great point, Fonz, because they work with you before practice, mm -hmm. during practice, after practice, before shoot-arounds, after shoot-arounds. They have developmental coaches. And Joel and Embiid guys can make jump shots. We didn't see that a lot this year at Kansas, but last year at the Jordan Brand Classic in practice, he would stand outside, three-point shot after three-point shot, and knock him down. He's got a face-up game to go with that post game. Tyler Eulis spins one outside to Shaquan Aaron, and the Louisville recruit is able to knock down a three. Slim frame, he's got that shake and bake game, he's got the finger roll, can shoot the three. I think he's going to be a perfect fit for Louisville, especially as he defends in the full, full court. And there he is finishing the bank. Alley oop pass. Long, lanky, can create his own. He's really strong. Jaquan Aaron at the pull-up jumper. Louisville signed a great class. They have a point guard by the name of Quentin Snyder coming in next year. Yes, yes. And a power forward, Jalen Johnson with size at 6'8". Rick Pitino, the Hall of Fame coach, signed a bunch of big guys. Yeah. They're going to be strong again next year, but they're in the ACC now. In indeed. And, you know, they needed someone to replace Luke Hancock. I mean, Luke Hancock has had an amazing two years for the Louisville Cardinals. And uh, Shaquan Aaron should be able to step in right away to make up the difference. Well, speaking of big guys, there's Miles Turner, number two in our ESPN 100. Not playing tonight because of injury, but the only uncommitted player of the Jordan Brand Classic All-Stars. And on ESPN News Recruiting Nation, Wednesday, April 30th at 4 p.m., We'll have a special announcement. Miles Turner, ranked number two in the ESPN 100, will announce his college choice. Will it be Duke? Will it be Kansas? Will it be Texas? Those seem to be the three leading candidates for Miles Turner. As you can see in the top 10, everyone else has already signed and committed. And when you look at the top 10 players in the class, five are big men. Mm. And they're all different. Okafor, a master inside, Alexander, Great rebounder, finisher. Miles Turner is the shot blocker in this class. Yeah. And you got Carl Towns and Trey Lyles who have outstanding skill, both inside and outside. The big men 
make this class special. You know what I love about, especially the three of them, Miles Turner, J Jalil Okafer, and Carl Towns, all of them are exceptional passers. They really are. They can really handle double teams well. Nice finish by Trey Lyles. Kentucky power forward will go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. Let's take a look at Paul Biancardi's biggest adjustments from high school to college and what these players will be facing when they make that jump. Oh, there's no question about it. Defense, whether it's in the post or on the perimeter, it has to be learned. It has to be taught both individually and team defense. For the guards, I think the middle game is so important. And for the bigs, they have to learn how to play with their back to the basket. Okafor is the master at that. Nobody else can come close. Attention to detail, guys, is going to be so important when those scouting reports show up, Fonz, and the yeah. physicality of the game and the speed of the game is going to change. Paul, for me, the most difficult adjustment was the defensive end because uh, I had the privilege of playing on two state championship teams coached by Benny Lewis at East St. Louis Lincoln High School, and we did the Syracuse way. We played zone. I was the guy who was responsible for controlling the lane and shot blocking and rebounding. So the most difficult part when we start to play man, the man concepts outside of the paint guard and ball screens being able to help it on on curl actions those things took a while to get used to so it was a pretty steep learning curve for me you played for a pretty good defensive coach in the nba what was his name um pat riley <laughs> pat riley the best defensive mind in the nba even as we speak but you're right about post defense you have to learn how to not just block shots you have to guard the low post front the low post show on screens yes you have to get out nowadays bob too pick and roll game you got to get out there and hedge and then get back to your man so team defense is a foreign word to a lot of these guys talking to coaches about these players specifically and Fonz, and i guess in a way it kind of plays into your experience all coaches seem to talk about these guys at this level as they just got by on raw ability they could score when they wanted to score they could clean the paint when they wanted to clean the paint. They're, they're so superior athletically to much of the competition that they faced in high school that they didn't need to be as technically sound as they will now have to be to play at that same superstar level in college. That's a great point, Bob. And to your point earlier, I think that's why these experiences are so valuable. Because that little hook shot that you used to make over somebody who's 6'5 at being 6'8 now doesn't work when you're on the inside. Right. And you got guys like Trey Lyles, they're 6'9 chasing that hook. You have to bang him, create some space, and get the shot off. So that's that next level of development for these guys. Chance at the line for Theo Pinson, number 10 in our ESPN 100. Although when he was 15 years old, we had him as the number one player in America and still hanging on to a top 10 ranking going to North Carolina. Because he had that athletic ability when he was young. And that could affect the game on both ends of the floor. Plays AAU basketball, played AAU basketball for CP3, wow. North Carolina. I mean, he's going to be a stud over time for North Carolina. He's still got to work on his jump shot. But he has a lot of other parts to the game that are going to help. Jared Sullinger weighing in. He thinks Tyus Jones was headed to Duke. That hashtag take flight JBC ought to be the East MVP. And you can join in on Twitter and vote for not only an East MVP, but also a West MVP. He played with a pretty good point guard in high school by the name of um, uh, oh, Trey Burke. <laughs> Not bad, huh? I mean, he was in our ESPN 100, and boy, did he blossom at Michigan. But when you think about Okafor, in some ways, he reminds me of Sullinger. The body, the ability to score with his back to the basket. I think he's better than Sullinger. Yes. Sorry, big Sully. Sorry. With his back to the basket. Now, yeah. Sullinger, a better rebounder at the mm -hmm. same stage. Okafor, a better scorer in the low post. I think Okafor may be a bit more mobile as well. His ability to change ends of the floor, whether it's in a trans transition situation, or just getting back the clock lane, or getting out and finishing in transition. But I love Jared Sullinger when he was at Ohio State, that's for sure. Kentucky on Kentucky right there. And the rebound ends up with Kentucky. Trey Lyles pulls it down for the East. Paul, I have to say, we've not talked about him a whole lot, but I've been really impressed with Trey Lyles tonight. He rebounds the basketball, sticks his nose in there, moves and seems to understand proper spacing on the floor, which leads to great shots like that by Oubre. Oubre strokes the three, going to Kansas, and that stretches the East lead to 12. And Bede and Wiggins leaving Kansas. Oubre and Alexander coming in. Not a bad trade. <laughs> in case you 
haven't been with us all night, you have missed highlight real play after highlight real play. Emmanuel Moutier with the lob off the backboard. We'll take a look at some of the other top plays when we come back. Plenty of future NBA talent on the floor in the Jordan Brand Classic. And we have a full day of NBA playoffs on ESPN and ABC tomorrow. First at 12.30, game one between the Nets and Raptors on ESPN. Then over to ABC at three for NBA countdown, followed by Warriors Clippers. A doubleheader tomorrow night on ESPN. Hawks, Pacers, Grizzlies, Thunder game ones in both of those series as well. So the NBA playoffs have now arrived and we begin four first round series tomorrow on ESPN and ABC. Bob, I think that Indiana Pacer Atlanta Hawks series could be pretty interesting because, you know, last year this time we thought that Indiana would possibly win a world championship and take it to the brink. They struggled this year. Roy Hibbert to his admittance over the last couple days has not been as aggressive, posting up on the inside. I think if they're going to get to the finals this year, he's going to have to take control, control the paint, and become more of a scorer, 12 to 15 points in the low box. Did I he just see falling it? off a cliff in the latter third of the season? Yeah. But it's what you do now that matters most. We just saw a press. Nice tip by Pinson. A press by the West team. <laughs> and that's a press break, by the way, for Kelly Oubre. Watch out for Moutier. Moutier with the left hand a little too strong, but he is fouled by Trey Lyles, so... Emmanuel Moutier, who is the author of several of our plays of the game. That time, the behind-the-back bounce pass to Stanley Johnson, heading to Arizona for the dunk. But it has been a heck of a night for the big men. They've shined in this game. They've been special to this senior class. Carl Towns with his skill. Okafor won a state championship at Whitney Young High School this year. And Cliff Alexander led his team to a tremendous season. It's not very often that you find the top three players in a class all to be post guys. Right. Very true. And I've been impressed with uh, Cliff Alexander. I mean, we knew he had a motor and he could rebound the basketball. I did not know he had three-point range. And he was the Nate Smith player of the year. <laughs> he could do that, though. <laughs> I mean, that's the Nate Smith player of the year. Jaleel Okafor was the Morgan Wooten McDonald's player of the year. Yeah. The awards went to the bigs. It's your last chance to vote for our players of the game. Hashtag take flight JBC. Another rejection for Cliff Alexander. Just use that hashtag on Twitter and pick a name for each team. And we'll tally up the votes and figure out who our Jordan Brand Classic MVPs are before the game ends. I love guys that are two-way players. Cliff's shown us his ability to be able to score. He's rebounding it well, something that's instinctive and intuitive to him. But how about he's been throwing some of those things up out of there. He has to have about six assists in this, or six block shots in this game. I mean, that's not a rejection. He's punching that. <laughs> he, he's just punching that into the first row. I love the fact that he wants to send a message. He does it in the post by threatening you as he goes up and tries to dunk the basketball around the rim, and he intimidates you on the defensive end with his ability to block shots. He hurts your feelings now. You go in there, he's going to hurt your feelings. And he don't care. I mean, he comes right at you. I talked to Miles Turner today, and I said, tell me about some of the big guys you've practiced against. He says, Carl Towns is so skilled. He says, I can't handle Jaleel Okafor right now. I'm not strong enough, sure. Miles Turner. So I said, what about Big Cliff? He said, I don't want to go near Cliff. He's too aggressive yeah. right now for me. You know, he plays, sim well, he doesn't have his skill set, but in terms of the physicality that he brings to the game, he reminds me of Draymond Green. He's got the broad shoulders. He bangs you on the inside. He rebounds the basketball. Now, again, he can't shoot it like Draymond. It doesn't handle it dr like Draymond. But in terms of physical presence, he's exactly like Draymond Green. Second. Emmanuel Moutier called for the foul. 2.48 to go in the second half. Friday Night Fights is on deck. So boxing as soon as we're done at Barclays Center here in Brooklyn with the Jordan Brand Classic. So a chance for Tyus Jones. Three-time Gatorade Minnesota Player of the Year headed to Duke. And he will add to the East League. Three really good players out of the state of Minnesota. Tyus Jones, Reed Travis, mm. Rashad Vaughn. Yeah. Now Tyus Jones, he was teammates with Reed Travis for the Howard Pulley AAU program. They won the AAU Super Showcase. I mean, wherever Tyus Jones plays, wherever he competes, that team wins. He's an excellent leader. 
He's a pass first kind of guard, and he's going to do an excellent job of setting up the Duke Blue Devils to, for scoring opportunities. But not a pass only yes. point guard, because well he can said. make the three. He has the floater, but he's always looking to do that, give it up. Well said. Count it. D'Angelo oh. Russell with an air ball. <laughs> Usually that's money. <laughs> He Just coming off the bench. He hasn't gotten a sweat yet, Paul. I mean, he has a smooth, confident, offensive game, D'Angelo Russell. Badmont is going to have a lot of fun with him. Yeah. Playing a little point guard, but mostly playing off the ball. But he can make plays when the shot clock is winding down. Which is something they desperately missed this season. Yes, but they had that great defender, Aaron Kraft. Yes. Foul called on Shaquan Aaron as Reed Travis heading to Stanford will head to the free throw line. Now that that young man right there, Shaquan Aaron, he needs to go to training table <laughs> four times a day. He's got to eat, make the strength and conditioning coach his best friend. He's got to bulk up just a little bit. Yeah, he'll get it. He'll get it when that, he goes off to college. Get that George Gervin type body. I tell you, I didn't really start lifting weights until I went off to college. I mean, guys like Alonzo Mourning, Billy Owens, and those guys during my day, they were so much more physically mature than I was in, in, in high school. But college is where you kind of grow to that next level. I had good nutrition there. I had strength and conditioning. And then by my junior, junior year, really, I kind of had a physical body that actually looked like a young man versus a little scrawny kid in high school. And that took you to the NBA? Oh, praise God. It was good. Oubre out of the double team, throws it to midcourt, and gets some help from Peek, who hands it off to Reed Travis for the flush. Now, we haven't talked about L.J. Peek. Mm -hmm. A defender, rebounder, a highly competitive kid. Georgetown has a really good recruiting class coming in with him, Isaac Copeland, and Trey Campbell, the point guard. Yeah. I love that class. I think L.J. Peek is going to be a good compliment to, to Devontae Smith Rivera, who, by Ooh. the way, from Indianapolis, this kid can put it in the hole. Average about nine points per game last year. This year, nearly 19. Hoyas lost a lot, too. They lost yes. Starks and Lubick. Yes. yes. They're going to like L.J. Peek and Copeland a lot. Oubre fouled, and that gives us a chance to announce our MVPs for the East and the West. We've been talking about the big men all night, how they have performed, and why not. Cliff Alexander, the West MVP, Kansas recruit with 23 points and eight rebounds and a half dozen blocks, as Lafonso pointed out earlier. And the East MVP, why not? The number one player in our ESPN 100, Jalil Okafor, with 27 points, nine rebounds. And we thank all of the fans that chimed in on Twitter with their MVP votes. Chai Town cleaning up the <laughs> hardware tonight, huh? Yeah. The teammates, Mac Irvin, AAU, rivals in high school. It's really just unfair to have those two guys on the same team from the same city. That's ridiculous. They're so competitive, but when they go off the court, they're such good friends. That's what makes them special. You know, I've been watching them, too. Uh, both of them move their feet extremely well, which is going to make them really good ball screen defending bigs because they can really move their feet and keep the basketball in front, something that a lot of bigs throughout college basketball can't do. We're going to be talking about those guys a lot. Sports on the top ten. Take that. <laughs> Want to talk about that dunk? L.J. Peak heading to Georgetown. We have not called his name often tonight, but that dunk made this the highest scoring Jordan Brand classic of all time. And this deserves a Sports Center top 10 nominee. That is airtime for L.J. Peak. A high level athlete. Ooh. Big time competitor. You know, he doesn't have the pizzazz and style of some of these other guys, but he just comes in and gets it done. He's going to be highly productive at Georgetown. More of a driver will really work on his jump shot, but again, I think he's going to be a good, good player for Georgetown. Shaquan Aaron off the bounce from Blackman. Did you see that lefty finger roll he had on that last possession? <laughs> I'm telling you, Rick Pertino has a lot to work with. Wow. With Shaquan Aaron. That's impressive. He's going to put the ball in his hands and run him off some screens, put him in the back line of that matchup or man to man. Wow. 
Eulis hits the three after Justice Winslow got the steal. And with his length, that run and jump pressing defense, he's the perfect guy to put in that. It's like having three arms. Yeah. Shaquan Aaron. <laughs> yeah. But you know, Tyler Eulis, how about that three point shot? Mm -hmm. Leave him alone next year because of all the talent Kentucky has with Devin Booker, Carl yes. Towns, Willie Cauley Stein. Leave him alone, double off of him, it's going to make you pay. It's going to put so much pressure on the opponent's defense. Jaleel Okafor with two more. Jaleel. Down to the last 11 seconds of a Jordan Brand Classic. That will go down as the highest scoring of all time. And it will be an East victory over the West. One last chance to knock one down, and doing so is Justice Winslow, part of that Duke recruiting class. The last five seconds. And one more windmill opportunity, but the rim was able to block LJ Peak at the buzzer. 158-147 is the final, the East over the West. For Quinn Kesnick, LaFonso Ellis, Paul Biancardi, I'm Bob Wischusen. Coming up now, it's Friday Night Fights from Turning Stone Casino up in New York. So long from Brooklyn.